Hey and welcome back my stretching and fitness friends. If this is your first time here, my name is Alex and welcome to my little training and stretching space. Today I have decided to talk about something a few other YouTubers have already talked about, but I just feel like I have some really, really cool tips that I would like to add and some cool research regarding front splits. So all I'm going to talk about today is I'm going to talk about the front split anatomy. So what are we actually stretching when we are stretching front splits? And then after that, I'm going to break down a whole session of stretching and what I think it should include based on science and based on my own experience. And I'm going to give you examples of all the exercises you need to include in your sessions, as well as how often you should do it and how long you should hold the different stretches for to get the best results for your front splits. So just super quickly before we start, I just want you to know a little bit about me, like who am I to sit here and think I have anything to say about it at all. I started stretching in my 20s and I have also studied physiotherapy. I am a full-time coach and specialize in flexibility and mobility training. And I have worked with heaps of different people uh, throughout my time and read a lot of research regarding flexibility. And this is why I started this channel and this is why I today want to share my best knowledge with you. What what worked for me, what works for my clients, what research says, what anatomy and physiology of our bodies say. Okay, so now as we're done with the longest introduction on earth, we're ready to jump straight into it. So we're just gonna start with what muscles are we actually stretching when we are stretching splits. So you can see here, we are stretching the front of our legs. So we're stretching our quads and our hip flexors. And on the back of our legs, we're stretching our hamstrings. And we are actually also stretching our adductors. And our adductors are the muscles on the insides of our legs and it all depends on the alignment in your splits. If your alignment is perfectly square, you're not really going to be stretching your adductors that much. But if your hips are a little bit open, which means your both hip bones are not pointing towards your front foot, you are going to be stretching your adductors. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just different alignment to your stretches. So now as we know what we're stretching, let's jump straight into the first thing I think it's super, super important to do. I tried to find some research about this, but I actually didn't find that much useful research that talks about warming up before flexibility training. But from my own experience and my client's experience, I think it is very important to warm up before you stretch as it is quite dangerous to stretch on very cold muscles, especially if we are going to be stretching for things like splits, which are a bit of an extreme stretch. So what I would recommend doing for your warm up, if you are in the gym, you can jump on a bike or you can jump on a treadmill. If you are at home, I would recommend doing running on the spot. If you can't run because you live in an apartment, you can do some squats. Once you're done with like a few rounds of squats, you can do some mountain climbers. And once you're done with that, I would really recommend doing burpees. They are not fun. I don't like them either, but they're really, really good for us. So maybe just trying to go for 10. And how much should we warm up? I, before my stretching, I like to warm up so much that I actually sweat and I'm all red in my face because then I know that I'm super warm and I also feel much more flexible when I'm very warm. Once we're done with our warm up, we're going to move on to a more specific warm up or something people often call active flexibility. So this is the kind of movements that allow us to not only warm up the particular muscle groups we are going to be stretching, but they also allow us to work them at the end of the range, which again allows us to build muscles. So we're not only flexible, but we're also strong enough to support for our flexibility. So for active flexibility, I'm going to give you two really good exercises. The first one is a glute bridge. So I'm going to be lying down on the ground. One of my feet goes in the middle. And from here, my other foot goes up and I'm going to be tilting my hips, squeezing my glutes, lifting my hips as high as I can, squeezing as much as I can on top and then coming down. And I would probably do at least two sets of 10 to 15 on each leg. And if that doesn't set your hamstrings on fire, then you probably just need to do a little bit more. Let's warm up our hip flexors and our quads. So for that, we're going to be lying down on the ground. The other leg remains on the ground, straight glued to the ground. And from here, I'm going to be lifting my top leg up 10 times, up and down, nice and slow, making sure I'm squeezing the quad of my top leg and my bottom leg so both legs are straight. After 10 repetitions, I'm going to keep my leg up as high as I can. And from here, I'm going to do 10 small pulses, so mini lifts. 
Once I'm done with that, I'm going to squeeze my quad and I'm going to try to use my hip flexors to pull my leg as close to my face as I can. And we're going to be holding here for 10 seconds. I would probably repeat this at least two times on each leg. And by that time, you should feel that your hip flexors are really on fire. So now as we are super warm in our muscles, we are ready to stretch. And for this part, I have found some really cool research as to what are the best stretches for us to achieve flexibility. And I have found that some of the best stretches are either PNF stretches or they are static stretches. So I'm going to give you examples of both. So we're just going to start with two examples of two static stretches. So here is a stretch for our hip flexors. So I'm going to be coming on my knee and from here I'm going to be lunging down as far as I can, making sure that my front foot is in front of my knee. Here I'm going to be placing my hands on my hips if you like, pushing your hips down. If you feel like you need to really fight for balance in this position, please use a yoga block or do this next to a wall just so you really feel that you can relax and sink into this position so you don't have to constantly fight for balance. So this is one stretch we can do for our hip flexors. And then here you can see a stretch you can do for your hamstrings. So we're going to be lying down on the ground. My hips are on the wall. My legs are up on the wall as well, making sure they're both straight. If you can't keep your legs straight here because your hamstrings are tight, you're going to be moving your hips a little bit away from the wall. But if you're fine with this, hips back to the wall. And from here, we're either going to be using an elastic band or just using your hands if you can reach to pull one of your legs to your face, making sure we're squeezing our quad and our leg is straight. Okay, so now I have given you these two stretches, but how long should we be holding them for? Is it good to hold it for two minutes? Should we be holding for 10 seconds, have a break 10 seconds? Like all these crazy intervals I have seen all over YouTube. I have read quite a bit of research on this topic and there's actually a lot of different conclusions, but one of the best studies and the studies that I think are most relevant to stretching for splits uh, was a study that was looking at, is it better for us to stretch two times 30 seconds in a day or is it better for us to stretch six times 10 seconds in a day? So they both end up in a minute, but is it better for us to do shorter intervals, more breaks, or is it better for us to do longer intervals less breaks. And this study has actually found that it doesn't have any significant effect on our flexibility at all. So it actually doesn't matter how long our intervals are, as long as the total amount of time we are in a particular stretch is the same. So from my personal experience, I would probably recommend doing two sets of 30 seconds on each stretch. If you feel like that's not enough for you and you're quite flexible and don't feel like this stretches you enough, then I would probably stay there for longer. So moving on from that, we have now looked at some static stretches, but what are some good P and F stretches? So here I'm going to show you a good PNF stretch. We are going to be lying down on our backs again. Our bottom leg is straight and our top leg is up in the air. We're going to use an elastic band if you can't reach your leg. And from here, I'm going to be pushing my foot as much as I can into the elastic band for 10 seconds. And after that, I'm going to be relaxing and pulling my leg to my face for 30 seconds. Once I'm done with those 30 seconds, I'm then again going to be pushing my foot against the band for 10 seconds. And when I'm done with that, I'm again going to relax and pull my leg as much as I can. So what PNF stretching really is, is that it tires out and really works out the muscle group right before it gets stretched. So this is why we push against the band and then relax and then push against the band and relax. From my personal experience, I think both PNF stretching and static stretching are two amazing ways of working towards splits. And I would definitely recommend combining both of those in your routines. So now we have warmed up, we have done some static stretches, we have done some PNF stretches, but we have yet not done the splits. It is super important that we do the splits when you train for splits. So the last thing I'm gonna give you is just a short sequence for your splits. I always like to kind of start on my bad leg just so I have something to look forward to when I get to my good leg. But if that's not your philosophy, it doesn't really matter which leg you start with. So I'm going to be coming down into my split as far as I can, and I'm going to be holding it in the middle for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, I'm going to be leaning to the front over my front leg, holding for 30 seconds. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to be leaning as far back as I can for another 30 seconds. 
When we're done with that, you can be coming out and you have now held your splits for an entire minute and a half. But since it was broken up into 30 second slots, it kind of doesn't feel as long as it would if we were just sitting in the exact same position, in my opinion, at least. So now as we know exactly what muscles we're stretching and what we should include in our stretching routine, I would just want to say a little bit about how often should we really stretch. And most of the research out there that looks at flexibility training actually looks at quite low intervals. So it is people People that stretch five times a week for 30 seconds a day or for a minute a day and I think if you stretch for a minute a day it's probably fine that you do it every day but I think if you stretch for 10 minutes you stretch for half an hour you stretch for an hour I think it is very important that we have breaks it is the same when we stretch as when we lift weights our muscles are getting used and they get these micro micro tiny tears in them that they need some time to recover so it is really important that if we stretch on monday i would really recommend you having a day off on tuesday and then you can perhaps stretch on wednesday again and a day off and then stretch on friday and i would probably not recommend stretching more than four times a week for a particular body part and this will actually bring results to you faster even though you do less work but your muscles are able to recover and your body is better able to adjust do it well when you're doing it and then appreciate the fact that we can have a little break so now you should know all the things you need to include in your stretching routine and all the things i included in my stretching routines when i was learning my splits in my 20s and last but not least i just want to say that flexibility is something that takes a lot of time you need to be really committed and you need to be extremely consistent there are some people out there that will be able to get their splits in two days or will be able to get their splits in two months but that doesn't mean that that's all of us and it's okay to know that flexibility takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of work so just be patient and be consistent and if you want some more tips to how you can accelerate your flexibility journey i have made a little video here listing all the best tips that i use when i started stretching and that i still use now and this is all i had for us today thank you for sticking with me throughout the whole video and if you have a second please let me know what inspired you to learn front splits as i would really really love to hear what your story is see you next time